well. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all uh, for coming to this very special talk today on preventing uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. My name is Neepa Mangat, and I will be your host this afternoon. Uh, I'll start by saying a little bit about myself. I turned vegan about three and a half years ago when I uh, was exposed to all the cruelty that goes on in the dairy industry. And I have always been a fitness uh, lover. I do my workouts. I have been running the half marathon for the past seven years, both in India and internationally. And my keen interest in nutrition, good health, and uh, fitness and performance brought me to Sharan. It was almost immediately, I mean, I was almost immediately convinced about the whole food plant-based lifestyle. And slowly and steadily, I incorporated it in my daily routine. I saw great results. I uh, started feeling better. I started performing better. Even my recovery was better. And uh, I lost a few extra kilos uh, that I had to lose, which were very difficult to lose. So all in all, it was a great thing that I did and a lovely decision that I took. Coming back to our topic today, uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. Can I please ask you all, like, how many of you know someone or know of someone who has any of these diseases? Can you please type it in the chat box? Yeah. Yes. So I'm seeing the chat box. So many of you already know your someone's dad had it, parents had it, close friends, mother. Yes. So this is very, very common. One in 10. Yes. One in 10 uh, adults over the age of 65 have this disease. And uh, the thing is, there is no cure or medication that can reverse it at all. But there's a lot we can do to prevent it. I'm sure if we all worked hard and we did what doctor says, you know, we could have prevented it. But uh, to know more about this, we will have Dr. Nandita Shah and Rena Rupani who are going to talk to us about this today. And uh, they are from Sharan. Now, Sharan stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And Sharan is a social enterprise which was started by Dr. Nandita Shah 15 years ago. Dr. Shah is a very special doctor. Yes, she's a unique doctor. You will ask me why? Because when you go to her for any, with any of your problems or for any treatment, she will not prescribe you any medicine, but will prescribe you food as medicine. Yes, food as medicine. Uh, Dr. Shah is also uh, the author of the bestseller, Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days. And she has received the prestigious Nari Shakti Puraskar Award from our honorary president for all the good work that she has done. Thousands and thousands of people have been able to cure and reverse their diseases and get better under the guidance of Dr. Nandita Shah. So I would, uh, I'm sure you all are very keen to know what she has to say, talk to us about today. And just before I call her, I would like to tell you, please do watch this presentation and listen to her carefully. And whatever questions you have, we will be opening the chat after once she is done with her presentation. And then we will try and answer as many questions as, uh, you know, we, as time permits. So without much ado, I would now like to call upon doctor. Over to you, doctor. Thank you, Nipa, and thank you, uh, Rena, and also my father. I'm so excited to have my father here today. You'll hear him later on. Um, so as Nipa said, Alzheimer's has become so common. My uncle suffered from Alzheimer's and, you know, he and his family were very dear to me and he was a very creative person, an architect, an interior designer and a toy maker a healthy toy maker. And unfortunately, he got dementia. And once you get dementia and or Alzheimer's, you stop relating with the rest of the world because you just don't know what's going on anymore. And, you know, I would say it's one of the most frightful diseases because you can live for years with that and yet you can't relate to anyone and you become totally dependent on your family members or other people. And that's why it's so very important that we all think about how we can prevent it. Because if one in 10 people are getting it, let it not be us, right? 
So today's topic is preventing Alzheimer's and dementia. And Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. Alzheimer's is one of the most common types of dementia and it affects 60 to 80 percent or I mean it's 6 to 80 percent of the dementia patients. But dementia in general means a decline in memory, reasoning, thinking, slowly becoming, slowly losing all our brain functions as, as um, with respect to thinking skills. And so it's one of the degenerative diseases. Degenerative means diseases where some cells are degenerating and these are mostly in old age like osteoporosis or um, uh, arthritis and Alzheimer's is one of them. And the, you know, whenever we want to prevent a problem, we should think what is the cause of that problem? And the main cause of most diseases, especially degenerative diseases, is fat. Where does the fat come from? I'm soon going to explain how fat causes degenerative diseases. But where does the fat come from in our lives? And number one, it's all animal products because you know, all animal products are full of fat. Boiled milk fat on top, boiled chicken fat on top, boiled fish fat on top, boiled meat fat on top. But then there are so many processed foods and fried foods that we consume regularly. And many of us use a lot of oil in day-to-day -day cooking. So fat is in, you know, animal products and ready-made foods. It's in oil, ghee, butter, even olive oil and coconut oil cause degenerative diseases. And how do all these things cause degenerative diseases? Here's a test tube of a blood sample that's taken, say, 10 hours after a meal. That means the person hasn't consumed any fat recently. And it's centrifuged. And you can see the plasma on top and the red cells in the bottom. And the plasma looks clear. But here's a sample of blood taken soon after a standard diet, the kind of diet that people seem to be consuming every day. You know, if you go to a restaurant and take a blood sample after a couple of hours, it's going to look like this. Now, this kind of blood is viscid. You know, you can see here, there's a difference. Actually, I'm just going to show you a bottle. This is a plastic bottle that I use just to demonstrate this. And here you can see water flowing through the bottle. Pretend the water is blood. And you can see that it's flowing really nicely. And it's the same if you buy a bottle of oil. The oil flows relatively freely. But if you mix oil and water, does it flow well? Do you know that it gets a little viscid? And that's exactly what happens in our blood vessels if we consume a lot of fat. So here you see the changes in our arteries over a period of time. And you see that that oil starts accumulating or the fat starts accumulating in the arteries. It's a little bit like a kitchen sink. If you pour oil down or keep washing dishes full of oil into the kitchen sink, then after some time, it's going to get clogged up and you'll find all this black gunk. And it's because the oil has been flowing down the, um, down the pipe. But that's exactly what happens in our arteries. And you know, our heart has to pump blood through all our arteries every single second of every single day. And you know, if you put all the arteries uh, back to back against each other, they would go around the equator two and a half times. That's how much our heart has to pump. And this is so that oxygen reaches every single part. If oxygen doesn't reach any part, then that part starts dying. Like, for example, if, you know, some blood vessel gets blocked in the uh, arms or legs, and that often happens in diabetes, 
then it could lead to gangrene. This is because of an arterial block. Or when we have angina, it's because of an arterial block or a stroke. That's an arterial block, right? So these are degenerative changes that are happening over a period of time because the arteries are getting blocked. But just imagine, the arteries to our heart and the arteries to our brain are tiny little arteries that reach every single part of the brain. And you can imagine that if the big arteries are getting blocked, the little ones are getting blocked pretty fast. And so one artery gets blocked and you lose some memory and another artery gets blocked and you lose some memory. And, you know, memory loss is also a degenerative disease. It need not even go into dementia or Alzheimer's. But in general, people tend to lose memory as they grow older. And this is just because our arteries are getting blocked over a period of time. And we can prevent this. If we didn't have so much fat in our food, the arteries won't get blocked. So I want to share with you some interesting facts about Alzheimer's, smoking, diabetes, um, obesity, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol increase the risk of Alzheimer's. Now these are exactly, you know, like smoking increases the risk of high blood pressure, that's because of blockage of arteries. And those of you who've ever attended my talks on diabetes, you know that the main cause of diabetes is fat, right? Everyone stops sugar and carbohydrates, nobody gets better. And of course, the main cause of obesity is also fat. And cholesterol, cholesterol only comes from animals and all animal products are full of fat. So all these factors have the same cause and therefore all these factors increase the risk of Alzheimer's. Hearing loss, loneliness, sedentary lifestyle can also cause Alzheimer's and that's because you're getting cut off from everything as well as lack of exercise. And in the second part of this uh, program, you're going to see how exercise really helps prevent Alzheimer's. And stress can also lead to risks of uh, Alzheimer's. And I always say that one of the main causes of stress is animal products. Because when we are stressed, we produce adrenaline. When animals are stressed, they produce adrenaline. And as we consume more animal products, we get more stress. Actually, you can do an experiment, cut out all the animal products in your diet just for a month and see the change in the state of mind. I recently did a talk on um, depression and one of the main causes of depression is also animal products and that's because these animals are stressed and depressed when we use them as food, right? Like they're kept in uh, confinement, if you've seen those chickens in the cages ready to be slaughtered, they're just six weeks old and their entire short lives they've been in a cage, ready for getting ready for slaughter. Cows, whose milk we drink, are artificially inseminated when they're just two years old so that they can have a baby as soon as possible so that they can deliver milk. Imagine how a, an animal feels or a mother feels when she's raped to get pregnant and then her baby is taken away from her and her milk is sold. I even call that robbery. And so I understand how Nipa left um, consuming animal products just because she heard about the cruelty in this. But the cruelty affects the animals and this Stress comes back to us through the foods, through their hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. And then there are genetic risks, which we'll talk about right at the end. I also want to mention one more thing. Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease or Kreutzfeldt-Jakob syndrome, which is the human version of mad cow disease. This has very similar symptoms to Alzheimer's. 
In fact, it's also called um, bovine in the cow, bovine spongiform encephalopathy. That means the brain becomes like a sponge. The brain has holes in it. And now I want to show you the brain in Alzheimer's disease. On the left hand side, you see a healthy brain. And then you see mild Alzheimer's and you can see that, you know, the brain tissue is becoming less and less as Alzheimer's becomes severe. Now, why does this happen? You can just imagine, I already explained you part of it, that if one artery, little arteries in the brain get blocked, little parts of the brain are already becoming un unusable, are dying off. And, you know, we have so many reserves in our body that initially we don't realize it. Because if a tiny part of the brain dies, another part can take over. But over a period of time, the, the ability to logically reason goes. And the symptoms of Alzheimer's would be you know, memory loss, misplacing items, difficulty in making judgments, or inability to understand images like the signals on the road, confusion with time and places and mood swings, and, you know, saying the same thing again and again, and difficulty in problem solving. And naturally, all this leads to social withdrawal because nobody can communicate with you anymore and of course inability to complete complex tasks because you can't even complete simple tasks now few more interesting facts about alzheimer's we already said it's the most common form of dementia and it usually occurs over the age of 60 and it's progressive and once it starts there's very little we can do to stop it. And that's why we should take charge right now. It's also known as type 3 diabetes. And that's because when someone's getting Alzheimer's, the insulin in the uh, brain increases and that starts sending toxins to the brain. When we have diabetes, in the beginning, our insulin increases in order to overcome the insulin resistance. And it's the same with Alzheimer's, that the in, uh, insulin increases in the brain. And an abnormal buildup of certain proteins in the brain are there, the amyloid plaques and the tau protein causing neurofibrillary tangling neurofibrillary tangling. I just want to show you a picture of this where you see these little yellow spots, uh, these hazy yellow spots, and these are amyloid plaques. And you can see that there are neurons that are straight, but there's some tangling in some of them and they're tangling against each other as well. And this is typical of Alzheimer's. Now, usually we don't see this during the lifetime of a person because we can't do a brain biopsy and therefore this is seen after. And that's why we don't really know whether someone has Alzheimer's or even Creutzfeldt-Jakob syndrome or another form of dementia. We can just tell from symptoms. Now, what causes these amyloid plaques? White foods white rice and flour and sugar, pasta, cakes, white bread, all of these spike the insulin production and send toxins to the brain. Now, what can we do to prevent Alzheimer's and dementia? Number one, make sure that you minimize or stop altogether animal products in your diet. And, you know, when we think about this, it looks like really difficult to do because we've been brought up thinking that we are omnivores and we've been brought up thinking that um, milk is essential and we need animal products for protein. But is that really true? 
I mean, we hardly know anyone with protein deficiency, but we definitely know a lot of people with Alzheimer's and dementia. And this can be prevented because we saw that fat blocks our blood vessels and causes little parts of the brain to die. And over a period of progression, it just increases. We should also stop all packaged food because invariably, all these packaged foods are full of either white things like maida or white flour or sugar or fat or all of these. And finally, we should remove all fat that is um, refined fat like butter, ghee, oils of all kinds. And that means even cold pressed oil and that's because these are refined out of the products they came from. Like butter is the fat of milk or oil is the fat of peanuts or sesame or sunflower or whatever, you know. So what we really need is fiber. Fiber, fiber is found only in plants and fiber holds on to fat and actually throws excess fat out of the body. And fiber is something that we take off when we change brown rice to white rice or have peeled dal or peel our vegetables. We should be keeping all our, the fiber that we possibly can in our diet. And even with fruits, I always say that we should not peel anything that a monkey would not peel. And that's because monkeys have the same appendages as we do and uh, so we should only peel the things that we can easily peel with our hands that means don't peel your kiwi but peel your oranges and then heavy metal poisoning and toxic chemicals also cause alzheimer's what are these it could be aluminum and aluminum is used widespread in cooking in restaurants. So we should think twice before eating at restaurants. And many of us also have aluminum pots and pans at home. And that's just because aluminum is a good conductor of electricity, uh, heat, and uh, aluminum is also very cheap. So it's easy to buy big uh, vessels of aluminum. And the other is copper. You know, many of us use copper vessels to put water in and drink the water the next morning. And that was something good in the past because copper kills bacteria. But now we are already drinking zero B water because if it comes out of the tap, it's chlorinated. And if it comes out of our filter, it's zero B. And so we don't need copper vessels. But, you know, if we have excess copper in our body, then it's harmful. And iron too. You know, we always think that iron is good for us, but using an iron pan all the time is not so great, especially if the iron rusts. Rust is oxidation. And if this oxidized iron goes in our body, it's even worse. Actually, even iron uh, supplements can be harmful. And you know, our body tells us this because when we take iron supplements, what do we get? Constipation. So our body's telling us, our body always speaks to us and tells us how we can look after ourselves. But sometimes we don't listen, right? We listen to doctors instead of our body. We should always listen to our body first. Now, if iron is in excess, it can compete with calcium and calcium can be low as well. And iron can cause oxidative stress in the body. And in order to combat oxidation, you know, oxidation even occurs if you make, uh, if, say, if you squeeze lime juice and store it in a bottle, it gets oxidized. Or have you ever seen that, you know, when you cut cabbage and then leave the other half in the fridge, after a while it becomes slightly brownish where it's been cut? That's also oxidation. So many fruits and vegetables get oxidized, apples get oxidized. Once we cut fruits and vegetables, they begin oxidizing. And that's why it's really nice if we can eat all our fruits and vegetables as fresh as possible. 
I do understand that it's not possible for everyone to uh, eat everything fresh every day because we eat at work and so on. But here's what we can do. We can make sure that, you know, when we're cooking, we cook just before we're eating and then eat so that uh, least amount of oxidation occurs. And all fruits and vegetables contain phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are, uh, you know, all the different colors are different phytonutrients and we need them for health. And they're also antioxidants. And the more antioxidants we eat, the more colorful fruits and vegetables we eat, the more we are protecting ourselves. Actually, I've seen some Indian thalis that look brown, white, and yellow. Have you seen those as well? How can we try to have all the colors of the rainbow every day? And you know, it doesn't have to be in every meal. So it's really possible. Like, you know, red can be tomatoes and we often have tomatoes every day. And um, blue or purple can be beetroot or purple cabbage and grapes and so on. It's so easy, but it's something that we often neglect. And vitamin E is very important as well. And once again, I really want to say that we shouldn't take supplements. And that's because when we take supplements, we get things in excess and in an isolated form. But nature always provides everything together. And so it's really advisable to get all your vitamin E from foods that we generally have. Most of us have tomatoes and pumpkin can be used and green leaves and almonds and oats. And, you know, even if we don't have asparagus every day, it doesn't really matter. Now, chemical toxins are, uh, I would say, ubiquitous. They are everywhere. And so we have to watch out for them. But sometimes we are actually inviting them in our lives and literally having them all over the space. So let's talk about what these are. Number one, it's food containing chemicals. Like, for example, conventionally grown food. Food that's grown with pesticides and fertilizers. And it's also packaged foods. Because if you look on the package and look at the ingredients, they'll surely or mostly be ingredients that you can't pronounce. Or you don't know what they are. They'll be E numbers or certain numbers, right? And these are all chemicals. And then there's personal care products. Have you ever seen that if your skin is dry and you put some oil on your skin, then after some time your skin gets dry again. So actually the oil is getting absorbed in the skin. And have you ever thought that, you know, when we use soap, then we're washing off all the oil that our body takes care to produce in order to protect our skin. And then we put on lotions, and have you ever looked at the ingredients in those lotions? If not, please do look at the ingredients because that will help you stop using them. It's full of chemicals. So instead of putting something on our body that you, know, you wouldn't dare put in your mouth, it's better to put uh, th you know, things that we would dare to put in our mouth, just like oil, for example. You can take the oil out of your kitchen and take it to your bathroom and use it on your skin. And also, you know, soaps and shampoos and perfumes and deodorants and uh, perfumes and cosmetics and shaving cream and toothpaste. And today, hand sanitizers. All of these uh, cause a chemical load on our body. And the real organ that gets affected by this chemical load is the liver, but we also want to protect all the parts of our body. And, you know, medicines are also chemicals. And that's why I'm so keen to help people reduce their medicines, because that will reduce their chemical load on their body. And then home care products. All those phenols and window cleaners and agarbattis and air fresheners 
and naphthalene balls and detergents and toilet cleaners and what have you, all of these are harmful because have you noticed that when you use them, you're inhaling them and they're entering our body? And then there are chemicals in the kitchen. Sometimes we store water in plastic bottles or, or you know, even the bottled water that we buy is in plastic. And have you ever tasted that water? Have you noticed that when you buy plastic uh, bottles of water and you taste that water, it tastes different from normal water? You can actually taste the chemicals in it. And aluminum, I already mentioned, and non-stick. Teflon is a chemical coating. And it starts going into your food when you heat the Teflon pan at high temperatures or also when you scratch the Teflon pan. And that's why we really need to be very careful. And last, or almost last, but not least, exercise. When we exercise, we pump oxygen into the brain. And that's why it's really important to do any kind of exercise you enjoy. And Rena will be talking more about this soon. So in summary, tips to prevent Alzheimer's, avoid all fatty foods. And that's why we have plenty of cooking classes where you can learn how to cook almost anything from um, fat, free meat replacers and dairy replacers to fat-free samosas. And all your food can be cooked without any oil. And you can make all kinds of things like, um, I, I wouldn't say fat-free, but low fat, because we don't mind having fat with fiber. Like we don't mind having fat in the form that God gave it to us. For example, in the form of beans, or in the form of nuts or seeds, because the fiber holds on to the fat. So avoid all uh, fat without fiber. Remember, animal products don't have any fiber. Increase the fiber by making sure that you don't peel any vegetables, not even pumpkins and bottle gourd or ridge gourd or anything. Avoid heavy metals, uh, especially the metals that leach into your food. And so it's really good to use steel and even better than steel is titanium steel. And then uh, avoid free radicals, which are found in meat and dairy and in products which are oxidizing. Avoid all kinds of supplements that you don't really need. And, you know, there are two supplements, vitamin B12 and D, which can't be got from food. Vitamin D is formed by the action of direct sunlight on our skin. And since most of us don't spend enough time in the sun, we may have low levels of vitamin D. Vitamin B12 is produced only by bacteria. And since we have a super hygienic lifestyle, we may require vitamin B12. In fact, Almost everyone requires vitamin B12 and D. So it's really important to check these. And then have natural antioxidants. Eat for color. Eat all the colors of the rainbow every day. Avoid all kinds of chemical toxins. And exercise. And I do want to say a word about genetics. Although Alzheimer's can be genetic, and that's why those who had family members with Alzheimer's need to look out even more, Genet genes are not our destiny. And you can, even if you've had family members with Alzheimer's, you can prevent it, as well as dementia. You can prevent it just by following the guidelines that I mentioned today. So I really wish you all the very best in health. And that's all for me for now. I'm open to questions if you... Thank you so much, doctor, for such great information. And, uh, you know, like just eating healthy can actually prevent so many diseases. Uh, we have a few questions in our chat box. And I would like to uh, ask you and you can answer them. 
uh, uh-huh. Mr. Gulshan is saying, hello, doctor. My father was not much of a meat eater, not even a junk food eater or sweets or alcohol. In fact, he was very active physically and mentally. Still, Al- Alzheimer's struck him suddenly. Doctor said it's hereditary. As my father had Alzheimer's, what are the possibilities of me getting affected? And are there any tests or scans that can detect the possibility of this occurrence? I know. And you know, I, I do uh, speak to many people who, I mean, none of us want to eat unhealthy, right? But the fact is that even though we are not doing so many things, we are consuming oil and we can reduce that oil or prevent it altogether. Like all our cooking classes teach you how to cook without oil. And our basic cooking class is so simple. It just teaches you techniques so you can convert your own recipes into oil free. So that's something really important. And then most of us think that dairy is essential. And even though we don't have a lot of sweets, we do eat maybe paneer or cheese or have milk in curds and buttermilk. And that's why, you know, we, we, let's say your father didn't know this before, but you do. So let's take charge of our health right now. I hope that answers Uh, the question. uh, Yes, we will wait for him to respond. Um, Bharti is saying what pans should be used for cooking since you said no non-stick and no aluminium what is a good uh, utensil to cook in so you can use glassware or corel or ceramic or stoneware and of course stainless steel and uh, titanium steel which I mentioned and of course clay pot as well that's our traditional one yes um Mr. Venkat, uh, Venkata Raman says, my question is, my mother suffered with dementia at the age of 85 for two years and she has seen hell. I am now 66 and we are vegetarians, but I take regularly 0.25 mg of Alprax for sleep as I'm a heart patient and got operated by bypass surgery in 1991. So I think he's okay, concerned so, about the medication. So here's how we can really help you. Sharon has a team of doctors and nutritionists and we do consultations all the time and we can help you gently reduce medicines and that's really important. You know, medicines, we all know have side effects, right? And medicines are chemical and, you know, real health is without any medicine. So let's get healthier together. Uh Sunita is asking, how different is Parkinson's from Alzheimer's and dementia? And to what extent does genes, uh, are the genes responsible? So Parkinson's is a totally different disease and Parkinson's can also be caused by heavy metals. I, I do want to mention that it's not that you cannot use iron vessels at all, just it shouldn't be your, uh, uh, using iron vessels all the time. Now Parkinson's is also caused by heavy metals. And, you know, honestly, all this that we have uh, been speaking about today should be implemented even to avoid Parkinson's. But it's a different disease, which causes uh, shaking without uh, control. There's no control on the movement. Now, there's one more question, Nipa, which I saw and that I do want to answer right away. And that was a question on coconut oil because... You know, there's a lot of information saying that coconut oil is good for you. And yes, that's true. There is an ingredient in coconut oil, which, is, which has been found in some research to be good for Alzheimer's. But fat is harmful. So how do you get that ingredient without consuming fat? By consuming coconut right always consume the whole because the fiber will take care of that excess fat right so if if we want to do uh, um, something to prevent and actually we teach how to cook without oil and as oil replacers we use coconut and peanut and sesame right so this can help so we have our next speaker is rena rupani a young and vibrant mother of 18 
uh, 18 year old girl and uh, people often mistake them as daughters you will see i mean sisters you will see now her daughter hates it but she loves it and this wasn't always the case for rena she did suffer a lot from acidity uh, a few years ago and uh, after she has adopted to the whole food plant based lifestyle her acidity has gone completely she has lost 17 kilos of weight within the span of one year and right now she heads sharan mumbai and uh, does a lot of seminars and teaches classes and programs such as six week uh, to health gain and weight loss program so do check out our website if you want to join any of our programs and she also does talks and kids uh, programs and even the basic cooking class the one doctor mentioned without oil and uh, yeah i think i've sped up my introduction and over to you rena thank you thank you uh, neepa uh, for that lovely introduction and uh, welcome everyone till now doctor has spoken about um, food but i'm going to go a little beyond food because health is uh, has got much more than food as well food plays a very very integral part because we need to remove fat and we learned that but i'm going to go a little ahead and talk to you about the other two pillars as far as health is concerned not only for dementia and alzheimer but for any of the uh, other diseases that we are having so please allow me to share my screen so basically uh, brain power uh, you know is improved by using the brain and just as bodily strength grows with exercise brain power grows by using the brain so how do we exercise and get this brain power how do we work on it i'm going to give you four action plans today i hope you have a notebook and a pen to make it to jot it down and start doing it of course as doctor mentioned physical exercise i had a friend who flew with doctor Nare uh, with uh, narendra modi ji and she told me that she was and it's i mean she told me this about 3 4 years ago but it still struck me that um, he remembers each and every crew members names even if he flies with them after 3 months 6 months and he probably he just became 70 2 3 days ago he was probably uh, you know 67 that time and i was just so amazed that he has such brilliant memory and probably one of the reasons is the yoga that he does uh, because to be a prime minister you need to have that sharp memory and uh, i know for a fact because i know a personal story and he has it um so it's never too late to exercise for just saying started exercising uh, 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 doing marathons about 100 years so there's never too late it's never too late to dance get into a sport any sport that you like could be swimming could be badminton could be squash and there's no end to age never think about it whoever is young here whoever is old age is just a number in our head look at this grandmom she's another inspiration amazing isn't it so it's never too late to start i again reiterate what doctor said the benefits of physical exercise would be health gain makes you feel happy energetic weight management strengthens your bones your muscles improves your ability to daily activities and increases your chances of living a longer healthier and an energetic life and please uh, if you are already exercising you know rack your brain do something different do something different for 3 months and then get back to your or increase the intensity but don't because the body and the mind and the brain gets used to a certain momentum keep spread keep shocking that momentum keep surprising that momentum so just do it so that was action plan number 1 exercise action plan number 2 stimulate the brain it's so important to keep stimulating the brain how do we do that this is for everybody for any disease it has nothing to do with alzheimer and dementia it's for everybody but it uh, we have seen that research has shown that people who undertake all these four action plans that i'm going to tell you about definitely even if they have alzheimer and dementia uh, the effects are much much lesser so imagine i give you a sentence everything in nature gives just reflect upon it when you're reflecting you're thinking can you tell me what does this mean can you type in the chat box what does everything in nature gives means 
let's do some reflection right now nature yeah. gives us fruits good vibes uh, nature is a giver love confidence sun gives heat positivity wonderful thank you so just taking a line and reflecting on it you're using your thinking your thinking prowess you know that's that's these are just simple things i'm telling you but it really makes a big difference then start a gratitude journal you know i have a gratitude journal i write every day in the morning and i write about 30 to 40 things i'm grateful for i'm doing it for months and now i've reached a point where every day i have to really rack my brain and then i realize really really there's so much to be grateful for but indirectly apart from adopting a gratitude i'm also um racking my brain so start take a diary start doing it immediately after this talk before your lunch today make sure that you have 30 things you're grateful for and do it every single day and you'll start racking your brain study you know after we finish our phd's our masters or our college or everything we stop studying that's why when we are teaching our children it's not so easy because the brain cells have not been activated as much i'll give you an example how you can study you choose a book that inspires you okay and then take a notebook and a pen open chapter 1 read the first paragraph and write what you understand in your own words so what are you doing you're reading you're analyzing reflecting on the information and then you're writing it down it's a very powerful exercise i cannot tell you uh I know because I've been doing it since quite a few years, and it really opens up your perspective in life and opens up your thinking as well. So, watch inspiring videos that make you think. You know that also makes a big, big difference. Um, play games. Chess is a brilliant one. You know, play it with your spouse. Card games. Scrabble with your children, or with your friends. Just take out some time to rack, rack, rack your brain. every single day sudoku crossword puzzles let us do one brain exercise today now okay so look at this all right now make a note okay the blue box has got a clock the red box has got an umbrella the green box has a mountain the orangish box has a tree the brown box has an elephant and the yellow box has a cake okay now we are shuffling the color cards now you have to tell me what is there behind each card so please quickly type type down your answer what is there in the brown box type it quickly what is there in the brown box someone says tree brown elephant 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 cake <laughs> it's elephant what is there in the red box cake umbrella umbrella clock umbrella umbrella lot of umbrellas wonderful the orange box tree tree yes everybody got that tree right the green box mountain clock mountain we have more mountains mountain absolutely the purple box clock we have clocks a lot of clocks coming up oh there was no purple box that was a trick okay <laughs> box <laughs> the blue okay box. now they say clock correct and the last the yellow box cake Cake. wonderful see it was a very small exercise that we did but it racked, racked your brain and nowadays we have so much happening on whatsapp you can join groups where they're doing creative thinking uh, you know you can even do it on your uh, computers and or buy a book where every day you promise to do a page okay give me a caption for this everybody let's give me a caption for this a caption for this picture the joy yeah so somebody says sky is the limit Wonderful. one with nature mm -hmm. flying sand life yeah. is a joy have it love freedom so we have so fun in the sand such a creative audience wonderful thank you so much for that i'm just trying to tell you look at a picture and start giving it a caption
just giving you little little things that you can actually do on a regular basis. Tell me words connected with the word well-being. Words connected with the word well-being. Happy, healthy, healthy life, good life, joyful, good health, peace, wonderful. confidence. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm sure there are more shares, but we're running out of time. So I don't want to give too much time to this, but just giving you ideas of how you can sit and rack your brains. Do it as a family activity every single day together. Take a word and everybody has to give words uh, in reference to that word. There's so much that you could do. Learn a new word, learn something new, get into a hobby, learn gardening or learn a new language, learn a musical instrument, learn dance, anything that you do new, surprises your brain and makes you use it read reading is very very vital as well so try a new recipe or twist the old recipe that you have you know i try to make sure that i, I make at least two new recipes a week as much as i can and it gives me so much satisfaction it makes me use my brain so anything and everything which will stimulate your thinking process will help you live a longer and a healthier and a happier life so action plan three is do things different. Action plan one was to exercise. Action plan two was to stimulate the brain. Action plan three is kind of connected. Do things differently. Like one day use your left hand if you're a right hand or a, the other way around. Take a different route. You know, just surprise your brain from the monotony because it gets so used to the monotony that it stops functioning. So we need to, uh, functioning in, in a sense stops exercising. You know, dial a number instead of just, you know, so many of us don't even remember telephone numbers nowadays. And earlier, we I, I still remember earlier numbers, but I don't remember now numbers because we are not doing it. Try and remember numbers, at least of the eight to 10 people that you're regularly dealing with. Dial their number instead of, uh, you know, just type and just pressing their name. So these are small, small things. There are millions and zillions of things. This is just to give you an idea of consciously trying to start thinking when you're doing things. And action plan number four is simply be happy. I wanted to show you this video, but we don't have the time, but it's beautiful. Click a picture. It's a three minute video. Please do watch it. Uh, it's a very beautiful video and will really make you smile and realize what happened. This is all about. So, um, you know, in case you need any support, Sharon is always there. As doctor said, we conduct cooking classes. We do a lot of workshops. So we do workshops, various workshops. We have lots of free talks like we just did. We have an amazing website and YouTube channel with a lot of information. And we have WhatsApp broadcast support where every day we send out health tips, sometimes recipes, details about our programs. So do join us somewhere and, and get connected to health because Sharon's mission is building a culture of health. Um, Somebody sent this to me, Samurai Sadhuku, and I was like, oh my God, I can't even think about doing this, but I'm going to make you meet somebody who actually does this every single day at 5 a.m. in the morning. And that is Dr. Nandita's father, okay? Um, Dr. Nandita's father, Surender Uncle, as we uh, lovingly call him at Sharon, is 86 years old, and he did his... Um, uh, bachelor's and master's from MIT in US all those years back and uh, he's a civil engineer by profession but right now he is also helping us out at Sharon. Uh, in fact I have had the privilege of uh, working with him and I can't tell you how precise and how uh, amazing his memory is and the fact that he when the public transport was on he would come to the, our office in Andheri from uh, town uh, South Bombay only by train and by uh, bus and you and at that age and he could he can walk faster than most of us so let's hear it from him himself hi uncle can uh, you can uh, you hear me yes i can hear you how are you doing today i'm fine then so uncle when did you start this uh, vegan diet that dr nandita is prescribing to everybody well, i was 52 1986 52. So it's been about uh, 34 years now? I'm not 52, sorry. 1986, when I was 52 years old. 
Yeah, so it's been about 34 years now that you have been uh, going on a plant-based diet. Yes. So why did you decide to go on a plant-based diet, Uncle? Because of the cruelty to the calf and the calf. Because and of the cruelty, yeah. okay. So but you don't, you don't miss your dairy products, Uncle? Uncle, you don't miss your dairy products? You know, your, your cheese and your ice cream and your curd, you don't miss it? No. Not at all? But I know you like ice cream a lot, right? I like ice cream a lot. <laughs> so there are a lot of dairy-free ice creams available, isn't it? So Uncle, can, can you tell us, uh, since how long you've not been having any medicines? Pardon? Since how many years you've not been having any medicines? At least since I became a vegan, I haven't taken any medicines. So since 34 years, no medicines at all? None, except when I went to for hernia operation in the hospital. Just two or three days they give you, that's it. Okay. And how's your health, Uncle? How are you doing during the lockdown? A little bored, but uh, I just walk in the home. From yesterday, I'm... I'm going to, I started going out on Marine Drive to have a walk. Okay. Yeah, every morning now. Wonderful. And Uncle, can you tell us uh, how do you, you said that at 5 a.m. in the morning you do the Sudoku every day. For how long? Well, since about 2005, six around that time. Okay. And it's been about 15 years you've been doing it. And how long do you do it for? 45 minutes, you were telling me? And every day the uh, difficulty of the uh, the problem is different. Mondays is easy, Friday is very hard. So it could be half an hour to maybe one hour, 10 minutes, depends. Okay. And then you told me you do a crossword also every day. Every morning I, I do the crossword. Crossword. Wonderful. So do you feel that, and what do you do at Sharon, Uncle? Can you tell everybody? I do all the uh, bank work. Uh, I do all the mailing of uh, publications, uh, or anything that Nandita asked me to do. <laughs> okay. And Uncle, uh, you also said that you manage all the accounts of the family as well, right? I, I do all the uh, My CA is very happy because I give him everything ready made. All, all He only needs to spend an hour to file the return. Okay, wonderful. And you were telling me you're cooking also a little bit during the lockdown. I used to cook before. Uh, when I was in the States, uh, my wife and I were both students. So we had to share the housework. Okay. And now what have you been making in the, in the lockdown, Uncle? I have uh, somebody staying with me. And he does the cooking, basically. I help him a little bit. Okay. So you're active throughout the day? Yeah, I am. So um, anything you would like to share with our, uh, I mean, do you have a great memory? Do you feel there's a big difference after you changed your diet? I don't, I don't know if the memory changed or not, but uh, I, I'm always good with figures. Maths was my uh, favorite subject at one time. Okay. Today, even the addition I do mentally uh, rather than using a calculator. I even think, addition mentally rather than using a calculator. Uh, Wonderful. Wonderful. We were young, we, we learned tables, we learned to do everything mentally. And right. I find that is, is good to keep. keep right. Great. I do use a calculator for a longer thing, but it is a simple thing I, uh, I do by uh, mentally. Wonderful. So thank you, Uncle, so much for joining us today and inspiring everyone that eating right, being active. So you're, you do everything. You are uh, not eating, uh, you're eating plant-based food, you're exercising, you're mentally stimulating yourself, and you're very happy always, isn't it? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Uncle. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so thank you, everybody. And uh, please... In, get these little aspects into your, um, into your life, eating right, thinking right, doing right. Trust me, you can live a life without medicines. It's as simple as that. So uh, till we close, I leave you with a song and uh,
thank Nipa and Jayashree today who uh, were at our hosts and co-hosts. Dr. Nandita, of course, for always teaching us and leading the way. And thank you, Surender Uncle, so much for joining us. Even at 86, he's vibrant and he is, uh, we, we, we work with him uh, on and off and we know he's an inspiration to all of us. So you've already seen a leading example. We leave you with this song, wishing you all a great health and a happy life always. Thank you. <laughs>